year it is. True that. Yeah, so it's, it's definitely good to live today, my lord. <laughs> yeah, so my friend here, Murray Murray, um, he, he's awesome. I've, I've followed him for a fair while, and um, fellas like this bloke and Sam Shaman, right, I've learned a lot from, a lot of stuff from. And the passion that, that what makes me follow them is their passion and love for Jesus. And, and that's that's basically it. Anything else that I gained from that was a bonus sort of thing. But um, just what <clears throat> ikes me about them a bit is um, is the religious side. The, the religions, are, it's like a little spot or blemish that they've got that clings on to them. And they drag it along with them. And um, you you see what I mean here by a question that he gets from somebody, <clears throat> and uh, usually he's good at explaining, you know, biblical stuff. And he can use the verses in the Bible and all that sort of stuff. Um, but when he's asked a question that pertains to mainly his religion, it's not really a biblical thing. All right, so um, let's have a listen to what he says here coming they are very very important speaking of questions um, this evening's um, uh, session or lecture is going to be based on one question that was sent from one of our beloved children um, the question I'll read part of it it says Bishop lately I had a conversation with a fellow Christian friend regarding praying to Mother Mary and Saints she said, uh, it's not right, we only pray to Jesus, which I normally do. My understanding and question... Okay, so I'll just pause it there for a sec. So pray, in the context of this question that he's being asked, is about praying, because she's thinking praying to God, right? Um, her friend uh, praying is talking about praying to saints, uh, the ones that are dead, I take it already, or have gone. So, um, where we go? That's some there, G40. Okay, so you got here, these saints here are the ones on earth that are still alive. So, we have many saints today. They're, they're everywhere. We're, you know, hopefully I'm one. Hopefully there's a, you know, a lot more like that sort of thing. So, salute every saint in Christ Jesus, the brethren which, um, which are with me greet you. Okay, so there are plenty of saints around there. And the saint, this saint here, is uh, G40. I'll have a look. Most holy thing, a saint. Um, sacred, physically pure, morally blameless, or religious. All right, ceremonially consecrated, um, holy one thing, saint. All right, blameless or religious. So, um, what's this one? Uh, salute, oh, so salute, greet, say hello. So that's what the salute there means. All right, um, so pray, yeah, and I only got the word pray from the New Testament because the old one just has a whole lot more, <laughs> a whole heap more. Um, so you you see here, it goes to First Timothy in a second. So First Timothy there, um, I will therefore that men pray everywhere all right so um, that pray is um, to pray to God supplicate or worship all right so that's the context of pray there's a couple other meanings to pray um, this one is also pray to God uh, G 21 um, 72 that one previously was 4336 okay supplicate worship uh, this one is um, middle voice primary to wish by implication to pray to God pray will or wish All right, so that's the main two praise but it's to God these are the other praise uh, to call near to invoke beseech or call for um, comfort desire uh, this pray is <clears throat> to beg or beseech request 
Alright, uh, beseech, desire, entreat, pray. Alright, so those are those those are the praise. So we'll just go back to where he is here. Question to my friend was why is it okay for people to pray for us on earth, but we can't ask the saints or Mother Mary to pray for us? Her answer was, they are not alive. I said, yes, they are. They are living spirits like you and I without the body. This all came as I was praying, um, and then I wouldn't agree with what she was saying. So to agree, to disagree, I said to her, that the bishop I go to on Sunday evenings can answer this. And between brackets she says, that's you, which is me. As I'm the lucky one. As my friend and I both go to the gospel church I attend on a Sunday morning, can you help to clarify this for me and her? Have a beautiful day. Well, I thank you very much, my beloved child, for this wonderful question. And I pray that you and your friend are always blessed and uh, always shown the right way and the right path to walk in uh, to reach our final destiny and that is uh, our Lord Jesus Christ in the Father's house. Amen. Now based on this, this evening's topic is going to be about the intercession of saints. And please bear with me because I will be quoting uh, a number of biblical verses um, and we will have a sort of a small uh, elaboration uh, on it as well. Um, intercession of saints. It is unfortunately to some of us... Uh, now you'll notice <clears throat> that's not what we, the question was and that's not the answer that we want. We want the answer to pray, right, which we conceive as our communication with God. Pray. And you can only pray to God. You cannot pray to people like the same way that you pray to God, which is worship. All right? Pray or worship. That's that's the way she's asked the question. This is the way it should be answered. All right? So we'll just see it. Uh, that <clears throat> they find it very difficult when you say, I include saints in my prayer or I pray to saints. And they misunderstand the concept of praying to saints and mix it with totally has got nothing to do with it and that is praying to our Lord Jesus Christ i.e. praying to God well yes exactly <clears throat> now you if you can pray to somebody while they're alive you know I pray you do this or I beg you to do that please please do this or please do that or please intercede on my behalf so I pray you pray for me to God you can probably say that um, but what this lady is asking about is praying to dead people that are in heaven um, to intercede on your behalf so this is what the lady's asking not praying to alive people um, in that sense or praying to God as in worship so that's the two ways you can take it so we're gonna go through it now and with the Lord's grace um, I pray that there will be some sort of a, a light shed on it and clarity made about what is or what do So there you go, he just threw that pray in there, <laughs> right? So he begs, uh, don't know who he's praying to or begs, he, he's just saying that. We mean by intercession of saints or when we pray to saints. Um, now, one thing before I come into it, the verses that we're going to be quoting to you is not all the verses that are in the Bible because we won't have the time to do that, to mention all the verses, but these are some of the verses in the Holy Bible. I'm going to begin with uh, the epistle of John, uh, John 1, chapter 2, verse 1. John 1, chapter 2, verse 1. St. John says, My little children, these things I write to you, so that you may not sin and if anyone sins we have an advocate with the father jesus christ the righteous this is verse one and then the reply to this verse one is in the following verse verse two and he himself meaning jesus our lord and he himself is the propitiation or atonement propitiation or atonement for our sins 
and not for ours only, but also for the whole world. So Jesus Christ is the, is the atonement for our sins, and not only ours, but the entire world. And then in 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 5, 1 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 5, St. Paul says, For there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. So now when we put together 1 Timothy 2, 5, and 1 John, the epistle of John, 1 John chapter 2, verse 1, John 1, Chapter 2, verse 1 says that Jesus Christ is the advocate between, with the Father. He is our advocate with the Father. In 1 Timothy 2, 5, St. Paul says that Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and men. Yeah, very good. I also just got something else from that when he said that before. That's why I like listening to these guys. I learn stuff. Um just from what they're saying so uh, Jesus is the <clears throat> the mediator between flesh and the father All right. uh, that, that's another thing I got from that so yeah just a point now the Lord Jesus is the only mediator and when and when the Holy Bible mentions the word mediator it mentions God but when the Holy Bible mentions advocate or intercedes on our behalf, it mentions the Father. Well, yeah, but when it mentions Jesus, you've got to thank God, because Jesus is God. You'll see in Hebrews there, where it says, where Father God is speaking to Son God. All right, so Jesus is still God. <laughs> so, anyway. Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and man. But Jesus Christ is the advocate interceding to the Father for us. Yes, which is why you pray through Jesus so that the Father will hear. Right now, God as God is a stranger, but the Father is always known by his children or his son, Jesus Christ. So as the Father, Jesus is the advocate. He intercedes to the Father for our sins. He is the atonement to our sins. But between God and man, he is the mediator. Now what is the difference between mediation and intercession? In fact, in, um, in 1 Timothy... Still, by the way, not the answer to this lady's question. <laughs> Chapter 2, verse 1, St. Paul says, My brethren, I beseech you to intercede for one another. And in the same chapter, verse 5... Yeah, yeah, so like you, what he's saying there with the saints, it's pretty, there's a lot of saints there wandering around, right? So you get your saints to pray for you or on your behalf. But there is one mediator between God and man, and that is the man, Christ Jesus. So, 1 Timothy 2, 1, intercede. 1 Timothy 2.5, mediator is only one. So when some of our beloveds mix the two and they say, but you see there is only one mediator between God and man and that is Jesus Christ. So why are you going to someone else asking for them to pray for you? Still not the lady's question. For you, there is only Jesus that is going to take you to God, no one else. But my beloved, the difference between mediation and intercession, we need to understand what it is. Intercession... See, now you see the gymnastics he has to do here to answer this question, and it's a, it's a simple question, but the thing is, he has to answer it this way to justify his religion or his church. And this is what I hate, is taking a really good man, a, a wonderful man of God, uh, and... Um, using this church this religion is using him to justify itself that uh, this religious spirit to justify itself so its existence um, if he didn't have this thing hanging on to him he wouldn't have to explain all this sort of stuff and, and it wouldn't be so hard for him to um, go to a bible verse and say here look this is where it says pray to saints all right it says here you must worship saints that are dead that have died right and ask them or pray to them and they will wander over to God there and 
talk to God in his ear and they'll say, you know, can you please listen to this person here? Now, I, I, I don't know about everyone else, but, you know, when you've presented yourself to God as a broken man and said, please fix me, um, he, he heard you, right? I didn't ask no saint to uh, intercede for me. I asked God himself. Uh, and and God Himself helped me. And that's that's how I got God. Right? And he fixed me that way, and uh, led in Holy gave me Holy Spirit, and that's the way we've we've worked along that way. But uh, this stuff here, oh, and and he, and he has, still hasn't got to the answer yet. <laughs> There's a good part coming up. Is when I go to someone and I ask them to help me with a specific thing that I need help with. That someone cannot help me with it, but that someone knows someone else that can help me with what I really need. When I go to this person and I ask them to help me, they go to someone else who can. This is called intercession. When I go to a saint, and I say, I need your help. The saint obviously cannot forgive my sins because that is blasphemy if I ask for... That's right. This is a living saint. Still not the question of a lady. You're talking about dead saints. Any saint to forgive my sins. So when I go to that saint and I need salvation, I need help, I'm asking the saint to intercede to, to the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, you may say, but I can go to Jesus directly. Why do I need a saint to take me to Jesus? Well, you can, but not always. For one simple fact, for as long as we live in the flesh, we sin. And the moment we sin, we are dead spiritually, totally separated from God. When I sin, I cannot go to Jesus Christ directly because that sin separated me from him. Okay, hated hey, every word he said there. <laughs> really did. This is like uh, everything about Mario, you know, I've liked him over the years, but that there was just terrible. I couldn't believe those words came out of his mouth, and that's the religious spirit. Um doing these things I, oh, I, I just can't believe he even believes that he, he's saying so um, if you're I, I presume he's talking about not saints anyway he's not talking about the, the saints so he's, he's talking about maybe the average person that hasn't come to God yet he's talking to them or somebody that has come to God that's already in Christ that has, I don't know, maybe had an unclean thought or something or whatever, um, looked at a woman with lust or whatever, and didn't mean to, but he's saying you can't go to Jesus now. You can't ask Jesus for forgiveness. you got to get someone else to come and tap on his shoulder and ask Jesus to, it's all right if you forgive that person over there. Mary, mate, this is terrible. So I need someone else's who is very close to him, a saint living in paradise who cannot sin anymore. Therefore, he is truly living. So anyway, he goes on and on and on. Just for ages. <laughs> and still doesn't answer the lady's question. So, yeah, the... This is the thing about this religious spirit. So I, I had a few others here. I looked up, um, what is it? Oh, so holy. To oh well, to be intervene. We got there. I pray. I wish. Uh, to pray. No, that's not the one. I thought. Pray. Supplicate. Oh yeah. It's looking up the difference, so yeah, qua can't pronounce it quad quadish quadish holy. All right, so holy word holy there, saints. It's got saints, saints can be holy. Um, this one here, quadosh sacred, holy. All right, saints. It's also got saints there. Um, right, this is a. Hagos again, 40, 
set apart by or for God holy sacred um, holy for the believer means likeness or nature with the Lord because different from the world all right so if you're not of this world if you've come out of the world and you're keeping yourself spotless um, the fundamental core meaning of 40 Agus is different thus a temple in the first century was Hagos because it was different from other buildings um, has a technical meaning different from the world of course like the Lord all right so that yeah that's what holy means like being set apart or different from the world and repenting means a different way of thinking you've changed your thinking so that's part of it as well all right so um what's this one kwadosh again oh yep saints um kletos so what have we got here? Called, invited, summoned by God to an office or salvation. Literally called. Uh, folks, uh, yep. He gives it to all people so that he can receive salvation. God desires every person to call out to him and receive his salvation. And there's his first Timothy there as well, uh, too. Okay, but uh, all can do so. Says, uh, yep, that one. Chassid, kind, pious, all right, saints, godly, uh, oh no, saints are there, but ungodly, oh, godly person, gracious, um, holy, and saints there, oh, that's Kurdish, there's a few of those, yeah, so, here's religion, pure religion undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless with less than affliction. Alright, so when you have a look at, um, where is it, unspotted, alright, unspotted, spotless, free, uh, free from vice, or unsullied, so yeah, no addictions, or that sort of stuff, or um, bad habits, and things like that, and uh, yeah, so that's, this is religion here, so anything that you attach to this, like praying to saints, or whatever, it's just like an unclean thing hanging on to it. It's uh, attached itself. It's attached itself to what is pure. All right. So this is the pure, um, refined religion. This is all that religion is. That's all. it involves a fair bit, obviously. But um, what they're doing there is these wonderful men, these men with passion and love for God and all that uh, are dragging along this baggage with them which they should just leave it leave it somewhere <laughs> don't bring it with them um, yeah so you'll see all the different uh, saints right 40G, 40G, these are the saints in um, in just the New Testament there so whenever it says saint it's usually the same same meaning Absolute. So yeah, that's that's what I'll say. Um, I'll say keep watching these guys because I still learn from um, as a Sam Shimon anyway. I still learn from him, um, even though he's like Catholic, <laughs> crazy Catholic, uh, and uh, but yeah, he, he's still uh, his passion and love for God um, is is why I follow him. Um, and um, I can forgive him for his vices and uh, whatever else, <laughs> or his little hang-on stuff that's hanging onto him, because we're all struggling with something. There's, you know, always one or two things left over that we're still struggling with every day, with like Paul says. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I just thought I'd point that out. So um, God bless, guys.